Welcome folks, today I'm talking about why session zero or zero session is important. And before I get started, I will say that I'm probably going to be talking a little bit quieter than I normally do my videos. So just turn up the volume because I have a sleeping baby in the house and I'm not waking her up. Before we get started though, make sure to hit like and subscribe if you can tell down there. Uh, you can see about 80% of my views on my videos come from non-subscribers, so consider enjoying the channel. Come on, come on, come on. Ah. If you don't know what a session zero is, I'll explain it real quickly here. It basically allows the dungeon master to explain his intended theme, setting ambient, as well as uh, for the players and dungeon master to basically set some ground rules, expectations, restrictions, and uh, even possibly an opportunity for the characters and the, or the players to introduce their characters to each other. A group might actually meet up in person for this. It may be over the phone, although I've never actually done that. It may just be in a group chat, which is probably a little bit more common nowadays. Uh, all things considered. The foremost reason why a session zero is important is because it allows the players and the dungeon master to basically set down ground rules or establish some safety tools um, that will be regarded going forward during the game. First and foremost, restrictions, ground rules, or safety tools uh, should be established, which basically explain what can and cannot or should not happen during this game so that both the dungeon master and all the players involved know basically what they can and cannot do, cover, or talk about. For example, uh, I'd say a lot of players are totally okay with just random commoners being slain because it really doesn't have that much effect on them. But, for example, one player may not be comfortable with violence against children. And so that would be established during a session zero. And so the dungeon master and all the players know, hey, don't go off randomly killing children because obviously that is a tender spot for that player or a sensitive area and that's just not something you should include. Most notable among acts of violence are those which include a sexual nature. Personally, I don't allow these in any of the games that I run nor have I really condoned it in any of the games that I've played in. Uh, I know for a lot of people this is a sensitive topic. So you can set this ground rule during session zero, be like, hey, you know, that's not happening and then everybody knows, you know, that's just completely off the table. And I'm not talking about one of the players going to the brothel and picking up a prostitute and the screen just fading to black. That's that's fine. I've done that, or I have it happen plenty of games, but specifically when it's regarding in acts of violence. Once the restrictions or safety tools have been established, then that is it. There should be no questions, you know, no exceptions to any sort of that thing. Essentially, one or more or all of the players in Dungeon Master uh, will not condone any sort of that behavior and uh, whether it is actual behavior in game, out of game, or even just things being said, uh, should know that all of that is completely off the table and so going forward just avoid it entirely. Following that, this gives the Game Master an opportunity to set the theme, ambiance, and setting for the upcoming campaign or whether it's just a one-shot. Uh, maybe they are running a module or it's all homebrew. Uh, maybe they're going after a high magic or a low magic setting. Maybe they're going for a more horror fantasy feeling versus uh, something else. Basically, this is when the uh, GM can put that on the table so the players know what exactly to expect moving forward. Session Zero also gives an opportunity for all the players to introduce their characters and make sure that they fit into the upcoming setting. Uh, perchance, the uh, Game Master said that, you know, this particular race isn't allowed because they're just non-existent in this setting and so one of the players know okay i have to change my race to a different one to make it fit to the setting this also gives an opportunity for all the players to make sure that their characters fit well together if all the players show up with wizard characters then all of them are going to go down pretty quickly whereas if they all show up with barbarians then maybe the dungeon master knows that they have to prepare a little bit meteor monsters or just to scrap all of the intrigue and magical uh, quest finding that they were supposed to do. Alternatively, some of the players can just switch their characters to a different class to make sure that things mesh a little bit better. The players may also use this opportunity to introduce their characters to each other uh, if they hadn't known each other beforehand. Perhaps they're just sitting in a bar as one walks in and the other and they, you know, have just a short maybe half hour session of a little bit of role play as they get to know each other and kind of form those bonds. I've had this in a couple session zeros, not necessarily all of them. I'd say in most of them, there hasn't been any sort of play whatsoever, 
but that is certainly an option. A Zero Session also offers an opportunity for the Game Master to set down any changes or homebrew that they are introducing for this upcoming campaign. For D&D, they may say that they are or are not using the rules for flanking, which is an optional rule. They may be introducing a new homebrewed class, a new homebrewed race, or any uh, homebrew spells which are available to the players themselves, or anything such in that matter. And so the players know that that is available to them and that they can use, take advantage of, or maybe even uh, you know change their existing characters to uh, better fit into the setting that the GM has uh, basically put up for them. And finally, Session Zero is an opportunity for the players and the GM just to get to know each other if this is the first time that they've ever played together. Uh, you know, maybe some of the players really click. Some of them uh, may not. Maybe, you know, one of them really dislikes the attitude of the other and decides to drop out at that point. That's totally fine because they know that's what they're going to be dealing with for the next, you know, however many upcoming weeks when they meet to play. Uh, so this is a really great opportunity for everybody to either form bonds or decide that maybe this isn't the group that they want to play with. In truth, a session zero isn't really all that necessary for a group who has been playing together for a long time. They know all of the, you know, safety tools, restrictions, ground rules that need to be set down. They, you know, have already meshed and bonded with each other. And so, you know, the whole getting to know each other thing isn't all that important. And a session zero may just boil down to uh, the group texting each other, you know, I call dibs on Warlock. I call dibs on Ranger and I call dibs on Monk and the GM saying, okay, we're running Curse of Strahd. Uh, that may be that all a session zero is. At other times, it may be up to an hour long uh, while the uh, players are creating their characters and the GM is explaining the setting. It really totally depends. Um, and so it can be, you know, complete polar opposites depending on basically your group dynamic and uh, a lot of other factors. That's all I've got for this video. I try to keep it as short as I could. Hopefully it doesn't turn out too long. But once again, make sure to hit like and subscribe and uh, leave a comment down below about what are some of your own thoughts about session zeros. That's all I've got. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.